Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And before we talk to today's guest, and I'm going to put on my anchorman voice because he's a really big deal. Uh, he's, he, he's forgotten more about entrepreneurship than like I even know. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, Six Sigma. You know him. You love him. From landmoto.com, scotttodd.net. And most importantly, not automating your Craigslist postings, postingdomination.com forward slash landgeek. Scott Todd, how are you? I am, I'm excited, Mark. I'm excited to uh, learn about our guest and his journey. Yeah, I mean, I do want to just mention that today's podcast is sponsored by postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek automate your Craigslist postings. I remember spending hours, if not days, figuring out why I was getting flagged, why I couldn't post locally. And now hundreds of postings a day, all with a click of a button, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. And Mark, now- Mark, that, 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 uh, that commercial sounds a lot like the loan geek commercial that gets ran on here too, so. Look, I, I, just, I just read what the copywriters write. <laughs> okay, all right, let's go. All right, let's talk to John Ferrara. John Ferrara, you're, you're gonna have to introduce yourself because it's so impressive that I won't even be able to do it right. So tell the Art of Passive Income listeners whom you are, if you wouldn't mind. Well, Mark, before I get to that, I just want to take a moment and thank you and Scott for giving me the opportunity to slide my soapbox up into your community and share my passion, plan, and purpose in life. And that is helping other people grow. I truly believe that's what we're on this planet to do. And, uh, and that service is the new sales. And that if you engage if you start every relationship, every engagement with the intent to learn as much as you can about that other person with the desire to help them become better, smarter, faster, achieve their passion, plan, and purpose in life, you will be able to build a gold mine. I know I did. And I guess you want me to talk a little bit about that. I, I would love it. I would love it. Just, All right. Yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, I, I think I've been in the relationship management business all my life. I grew up on my father's car lot and I used to diss my dad because he was in sales. And I, I really, my, my mentor was my uncle John who helped invent radar and microwave at MIT in the forties. And he was president of IEEE and a mucky muck in the aerospace industry. And I grew up watching the space program. So I love technology and I bought my first computer when I graduated high school in 1978. I had the first computer pretty much in Los Angeles. And I, when I was going to college, getting my computer science degree because I never wanted to be in sales. I had six computers in my bedroom. I was a nerd, but I needed to pay my way through school. So I got a job in this computer land store and that was when computers didn't exist in corporations. I sold the first 50,000 computers to corporations in Los Angeles. I was making 70 grand a year working uh, part-time living at home because computers were 55% margin. Now that was money, honey, back in the day. But all this led me to this journey of technology. And I, again, I didn't want to be in sales. So I got a job at Hughes Space Communications and helped build satellites and ground systems for two years. And I quickly discovered I'm not an aerospace guy. So I got a job at a startup in Boston. They put me in uh, sales in a city called Dallas. And they gave me leads on a sheet of paper and said, go get them. Well, these weren't even leads. They were basically phone numbers for IT departments and people in large corporations in my area. So what I do is I'd pick up the phone and cold call them and I'd make notes on my piece of paper and uh, the lead. And then I put my appointment in my daytime and I did my forecast on a spreadsheet. And I said, this is really dumb, right? And back then there was no outlook. There was no Salesforce. There was no CRM. And so I basically had to go find tools to do it. And because I worked my way through college in a computer store, I knew every software program that existed at that moment and time for microcomputers. And there wasn't any contact management. There wasn't any sales automation. There wasn't any CRM. In fact, there wasn't a tool that integrated the contacts you're connecting to, to the conversations you're having and the activities you're driving, email, contact, and calendar. And there wasn't any sales and market automation software that went with it. So at 29 years old, I was too young and dumb to know any better. I quit my job. And I started a company called Goldmine that essentially pioneered what we know of as contact management, SFA, Salesforce automation, CRM, customer relationship management, and market automation. 
back in the day when it was the place we all lived. And I uh, ran that company for 10 years and sold it when I was 40 and I retired and I raised three kids. And I'm gonna tell you, Mark and Scott, being a present and engaged father and husband is the best way to grow your soul and learn about relationships. And I did that for eight years, but it also gave me a chance to begin to use social media. And I saw how it's gonna change the customer journey and the way we build our brands and the way customers engage with us. And this was in 2006, seven and eight, back before anybody even knew about social selling or social business. And I saw an opportunity to recreate what I started with Goldmine and take it to the next level in the cloud. And that's Nimble. It's, it's amazing. I, I, I want to just ask, you know, a quick question because it's, it's so impressive. From an entrepreneurial start, I mean, you know, because so many people I think have, and I, I don't know, Scott, if you agree with this or not. I think they think that the entrepreneur's um, main goal is to do what John did. Build this amazing company. I remember Goldmine. Um, and then exit, right? And now money is no longer an issue, right? Um, you can retire. You don't have to work, right? I did retire. You did retire. Almost 10 years. Right, right. So I think a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs think, okay, leisure is the goal, right? I want to get to total leisure. That, that's not the goal in life. And No, and so now you can say, because you've been there, what is it like to have that exit? What is it like to retire? And then... What, you know, what fuels you now? I mean, you can tell you've got a ton of enthusiasm and passion for helping other people. Well, you know, it's interesting is a, a year after I sold Goldmine for more money that, than you could ever imagine at 40 years old, I got a tumor at 41 and, uh, and almost died. And I think that when you're faced with your mortality uh, and the journey of wellness, if you're blessed, that you have to re-examine yourself and your life and your purpose. And in the process of uh, healing and, uh, and, and re-understanding my purpose, I, I came to the conclusion that we're on this planet to grow our souls and help other people grow theirs. And life's as simple as that. And that, and that you do most of that growing by being present with another human being. And if you're lucky, they'll reflect your shit back at you. And if you can look at your shit in life and work on it, you can grow. And ultimately, by doing the same thing for somebody else, you're gonna help them grow. And in the end, that's all you leave this planet with is that moment that you're truly connected to another person, the vibrations and the, and the gifts that you leave from that. Just like what you and I and Scott are doing right now and then doing for the community that happens to be listening to us. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that the the words and the actual execution of it, especially today, when if I go to a restaurant, 90% of the people aren't present. Just. No, they're not. Um, and like even my wife, like she'll be in bed and she'll be looking at Facebook. And next yeah. thing you know, 30 minutes will go by and I'm channel surfing and we're missing that opportunity to truly connect with each other. And yeah. in a time in history when, I mean, this is relatively all new. Our brains are, are and it's only going to get worse, I think, with virtual reality. Yeah. We're, we're all sort of uh, like these dopamine addicts. And how do, you, how do you navigate that? Because your actual business now, Nimble.com, is so integrated in all of these things and you're you're ubiquitous. You're not only you're social, but um, you're you're web based. You're 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 uh, tablet based. You're, you're iPhone based. You're you know Android based. Like you're everywhere. Well, I, I think that the more digital we get, the more human we need to be, because ultimately business isn't about B to B or B to C. It's P to P and H to H. It's it's people buy from people, and they buy from people they like, know, and trust. And if you're gonna earn somebody's intimacy and trust to become their trusted advisor, so when they need your products and services, you're not only top of mind, but they pick up the phone and they call you and they drag their friends with them. How do you do that today? You do that by not sending somebody a quarterly newsletter and saying, buy my product or how great I am. 
You do that by giving your knowledge away on a moment by moment basis every single day, inspiring and educating other people about how you can help them become better, smarter, faster. And if you do that, if you teach people to fish instead of telling them how great your fishing pole is, then you can build trusted relationships at scale and ideally find opportunities to serve other people on a daily basis. Well, a lot of tweetable co- quotes in there, Scott Todd. I, I mean, you know, I, I, think, uh, I think it's a model. I think, you know, we, the, the world has changed where you would keep all your knowledge to yourself. You know, yeah. and clearly it's, it's one in which, you know, sharing is the, is the new caring, right? You know, you share if you care and you, you help other people. Well, and I, I think you're right. I think that, you know, you, you get to the point, I mean, you, you should, everybody should be on this mission to try to get to the point as fast as possible to where they've got themselves taken care of. And then they can look around and say, here, let me help you now. And you start to pull people along to, to help change their world and to change their life. I, I think that social media is making the world a smaller place. It's building, it's taking us back to the small community where your reputation is built on the promises that you make and the experiences that you deliver. And if you can align the promises that you make to the experiences that you deliver, you could really accelerate in life. And then, and and if you think about it in the old days in that small town, that business person didn't advertise. They built their reputation for from every engagement that they made with other people. And what happened was with mass manufacturing in cities, we all went to the cities, these, 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 these corporations started building all these products where they actually had to hire uh, door-to-door salespeople and to sell all those brushes and mad men marketing to get your attention. And that transformed the way that we buy and we sell. But I think that social media has changed the way the customers make their buying decisions, the way that we need to engage with them. And ideally the philosophy of sales where sales does, isn't a four letter word, where sales is about helping somebody else. And ideally you engage with somebody without the intent to bag them and tag them, but to figure out how you might be able to add more to their journey today and on a daily basis. It, it, it's, so, it, it's so eloquently said, it's these things that we kind of all know intuitively, but to hear you say it, I think really, uh, it's so, so valuable, John. And, um, and, and this is why I got back into business because I started looking at the tools people use to manage relationships and to manage the sales and marketing process. And I saw that they really weren't aligned with the new customer journey. So I started using Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn and other platforms for engaging with human beings. And I quickly found that I was able to build relationships at scale globally, but I couldn't manage them. There's a thing called a Dunbar limit, which essentially says you can only manage 100 to 200 people in your head at one time. That's a guy named Dunbar in England who did that study. Most people have thousands of contacts and now it's getting even bigger and bigger. And so how do you manage relationships at scale with your quote, with the tools you have today? So we all live in Outlook, Address Book, or Google Contacts. Some people live in a blend of those. And the problem is with those platforms is that email, contact, and calendar aren't connected, which means if you go to a contact record in Outlook, Address Book, or Google Contacts, the email and and calendar activities that you and the team have done with them aren't linked to the contact record, which means you don't have context and you don't know who they are and what their business is about. And that's your job as a business person is to prepare before you have your engagement. You need to know who somebody is. You need to know what the business is about. So you Google them before a meeting. And ultimately you don't type that into the contact database. So ultimately when you go back to that contact, you don't have the history, you don't have the background and you're not prepared. And that's just yourself, let alone your team member. So our contact managers, which are the operating system of our business, because if you have a business today, you have two choices, Google Apps for Work or Office 365 for your email, contact, and productivity suite. 
and they're not good at contact management, let alone sales and market automation. And if you start talking about sales and market automation, you start talking about CRM. CRM is supposed to stand for customer relationship management. They're not about relationships. Customer re CRMs are about reporting management because ultimately they were really designed to keep the finger on the pulse of the business and the hand around the neck of the salesperson. And most people, most salespeople hate their CRM because it's not designed for them. It's not designed to help them engage in that moment with that other human being to be successful at their, um, their business engagement. And so that's why I got back in the business with Nimble to build the first relationship platform that works for you by building itself from the data that you already have in your business, which is email, contact, calendar, and your social interactions and contacts, and then work with you everywhere you work. Because if you're in your contact manager or your CRM, you're not actually engaging with those people. We all live in our inbox and now more and more wherever we can have conversations with customers, which is Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram, Foursquare, Google+, Crunchbase, uh, and Snapchat. And so how do you manage relationships at scale with all these different contacts in all these different places? That's what Nimble does for you. That's, that's incredible. Um, as far as you, you know, starting it up, when, when did you start Nimble? Like, obviously you had a problem. You went out and solved it for yourself. Now yeah. you're building a team. You're hiring your you're, you know, you're, you're motivating, you're, you're, you're doing these things. You're the visionary, right? Yeah. Uh, I want to kind of get into the details of that piece. Like how, the weeds, the weeds of entrepreneurship, the weeds of entrepreneurship. Like how does someone like a John Ferrara grow another business to that, to that next level? Well, let's first talk about how I built Goldmine because I think it's applicable to how I built Nimble because there's okay. lessons in both. Okay. So imagine it's 1989, there is no Outlook, there is no Salesforce, there is no CRM or contact management and I built one of the first ones. How do you sell that? So I'm, 40, I'm, I'm 29 years old, I have $5,000 in the bank. How do you reach your audience? My audience is individuals and in small teams of two to 25 in, in small, medium, large and enterprise companies who would need relationship management software but they don't even know they need it. So what I did was I went after the influencer of my prospect. And that was the guy that sold them the network, the Novell reseller, because I built the first networkable business application. So I cold call every single Novell reseller in the country and I got them to use it because people sell what they know and they know what they use. And then once they started to use it, then they started to recommend it and they already had thousands of existing customers. And I immediately was able to build a revenue stream of $50,000 a month without having to spend a dime on marketing. And so that's how we essentially built Goldmine without ever taking a dime of capital. We never took a dime of venture, no bank loans. And when I sold it 10 years later, we were doing about $70 million uh, a year in revenue and we had about 5 million customers. Okay. Okay. So what was, what did you learn? Or if you could go back, okay, you're 29 years old. What, what would you tell your 29 years old then? Well, I, I really do believe that you need to get educated about the processes that you're endeavoring to do and that there already are people who've already done these things. So learn from the best. So uh, believe it or not, I read this book by Tom Hopkins about selling. <laughs> he was on the podcast. You he was this year. I, yeah, I, we know Tom. Will you tell Tom I said, hey, and thanks for helping me build Goldmine. So I read Zig Ziglar, Dale Carnegie, Brian Tracy, Stephen Covey, Napoleon Hill, all the traditional books about think and grow rich and positioning and the 22 immutable laws of marketing. And I had to learn on the go. But ultimately what I did is I took these things like the concepts of strategic selling and, uh, and also nurture marketing and I built software that did these things because I was a computer science math major. So I knew how to build this stuff. And so if you're listening to this today, you need to build your, um, your dreams on the shoulders of giants. And so the, the knowledge is already out there. In fact, today, when people start talking about social selling and social business, it really is just regurgitating Dale Carnegie and all these other greats who are talking about building relationships and that the more people you outgrow, the more you will grow. This is just old stuff regurgitated for a digital age. And so um, don't try to reinvent it yourself. Go and build your dreams on the shoulders of giants. 
Okay, so now you, you've got all this knowledge, you've got all this entrepreneurial success, and now you're going back into the startup world. Yeah. With nimble. Yeah, so this is 2009 and 10. It's been 10 years since I've been in the technology business. Nobody knows who John Ferrari is, and the only <laughs> people who know what Goldmine are, old farts, are, are people who are just kind. So uh, how do I go build my brand and the nimble brand, right? So if you don't have money to advertise, which most people don't at the scale you need to grow a business, ideally you identify the influencers of your core constituency in and around the areas of promise of your product. Okay, <laughs> so I did that in the Novell days with the Novell resellers and then I scaled that by going after the writers of the business and technology pubs and essentially called them up and said, how can I help you write more stories? Goldmine got more awards, more print than all the other products combined because we learned how to tell stories and get other people to tell those stories through PC Magazine and PC World and all those other places, Fortune, et cetera. So here I am today and those publications aren't really relevant anymore. So the pubs aren't there. So you know, PR works, but not to the level. So what I did is I started to, um, I understood that uh, what you need to do in order to grow a business today is you need to get out in the social river and you need to start engaging with customers who are in the process of their buyer and journey, which means sharing content in order to get their eyeball. So what I did is I identified the top people that inspired me in around the areas of promise of my product, top thought leaders in sales and marketing and social media and so, uh, customer service, et cetera, entrepreneurship, startups. And I started sharing their content and attributing the category appropriately, pound sales, pound marketing, and their name. What that did is it began to get people to bite, plus one like, comment, retweet, and engage myself and my company brand. But also I then began to engage the influencers because they saw that I was sharing their stuff. They said, hey, John Ferrar, thanks for sharing my stuff. And then I said, hey, Mark and Scott, great to connect with you. I love your stuff because of X, Y, and Z, let's have a chat. And then when you get in a chat with that influencer, you don't start talking about yourself or your product. You ask them questions and you shut up and you listen to find ways to add value to them. And that begins a relationship. So we built an army of influencers in and around the areas of promise of our product. They then began to use Nimble and become evangelists. And then their networks of networks started doing the same. And that's how we built the brand. I'm going to transcribe this and I'm going to write a book called The Five Minute MBA. <laughs> well, I've got the five E's that essentially summarize it very quickly. Okay, what are they? Uh, educate, enchant, engage, embrace, and empower your customers, right? So you educate with enchanting content uh, and you engage people that buy it on it with the uh, intent to empower them to grow. Yeah, Scott, I'm, I'm taking all of this, by the way. We're not, we're not splitting this at all. Okay, and then, and then I got the three P's. All right, let's hear the three P's. So if you can figure out what your passion is and build a plan to achieve it and make it your purpose on a daily basis, you can achieve anything you want in life. And there I got the five F's. All right, all right. Let's, this is all going to get transcribed. Keep going. Okay. So the five F's is human beings connect across the five F's of life. Family, friends, food, fun, and frolicking. And ultimately, if you want to build and maintain a business relationship, you need to take it to that personal level because that's where relationships get sticky and can last beyond the business bumps in life. And that's why if you depend on LinkedIn as a way to connect with other human beings, you're done. So for me, when I nimble somebody, it maps their identity across all their identities. And you can learn more about John Ferrar in five seconds by looking at my Instagram than you can in five minutes on my LinkedIn. And so ultimately, you need at least three to eight data points to find a point on a map, longitude, latitude, and altitude. And if I just give you two, you may not find me. And so ultimately, to connect with another human being, you need to know who they are, what their business is about across all their identities. And if you do that properly, you will be armed and prepared to earn their intimacy and trust so you have the opportunity to help them grow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's powerful stuff. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm just taking notes here. I'm, I'm uh, writing my book. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we got the, the, five, the, uh, the five E's, the three P's, the five F's. I do, I think that, um, you know, one of the things that you talked about, John, is, you know, the, you, you talked about family and friends. And, you know, like I, 
as part of the first five S food, I, I heard food. Maybe I'm just hungry. I don't no, know. You heard food. No, it's, it's you heard family, food. family, friends, food, fun, and frolicking. I mean, this is essentially all we put on our Instagram and our Facebook yeah. and all these other places. And, and, and we do that. We share the stuff because our souls are hungry. I think, I think that uh, even, even those, those five Fs, you know, it's, it's not, it gives you a great insight into a person, but if you're ever struggling with something to talk about to somebody, just go to those five Fs alone because, you know, you could, especially like in a, in a business setting or something, pe- people, I mean, you know, okay, they're there to do a function or something, but you know what, at the end of the day, they're not, I mean, they don't go home and, and, and think about, uh, you know, their, their company or they don't dream about their company. Or if you look at their phones, you know, they don't, they don't have on their, their cover necessarily their, their company logo. What they have, they have their wife, mm-hmm. their family, they have maybe places they've been, in, food they've eaten. Yeah. In, in the, in the old days, when, when we went into an office, I used to teach my, my salespeople, look at their walls. Look at the books they read, the degree of the school they went to, the knickknacks they collect. All these are clues into who that person is and what they're about. And ultimately, this is how you start every conversation. If you don't think about it or not, you don't start the conversation by saying, okay, have you looked at my proposal? You start it by saying, how's your day? How's the weather? What about, how about them tigers? You know, uh, you know, whatever you talk about. And ideally you do that for at least a few minutes, if not five minutes in order to break the ice. And that then opens up that person. And ultimately you want the person you're engaging with to be present, to be open. And that creates opportunities for you to uh, ideally add value to one another. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, John, you're so fascinating. I'd love to know a typical John Ferrara day from the, from the moment you wake up, what time you wake up, what you do, and then by the time you go to sleep. What's a typical let's say, Thursday look like for you? Yeah, so I, I, uh, I wake up anywhere from um, 6 to 7 o'clock in the morning, and, uh, and my wife uh, grew up on a farm in Central California, so she loves animals. And we usually end up with four of our rescue dogs in our bed, and then our daughter and maybe one of our sons. And and you know we'll lay there as a as a group of salamanders, just sort of uh, cuddling up together. And then uh, I get up and I put cold water on my face, just because I just like to feel a little fresher. And I put on something cozy, and I go downstairs and I I make some coffee. Uh, cause I love my first cup of coffee in the morning. I'm usually the first one down. And so I have a little bit of time, a little bit of moment and, uh, I'm a digital guy. So I usually have my cup of coffee and I open up my MacBook pro and I, you know, I do whatever you do on the computer for the, you know, that period of time while I'm having that cup of coffee. Cause for me, I love that first cup. And then my fa- by that time, my family's down and I go hang out at the table, either help prepare people, sign things, help them prepare their day. And, uh, and then I'll go take my shower, kiss my wife goodbye and jump in the entrepreneurial trench with my team. Okay. And then what time do you think you're, you're home by on, on average? Yeah. So I usually like to get home between six and seven and, uh, and I love to cook. Um, so my dad's from Sicily, uh, his uh, eight, uh, eight brothers and sisters came over on a boat in the 20s and they all cooked, even the men. And I truly believe that by serving other human beings is the best way to build a connection. And so one of my five Fs is food and friends and, uh, and I love to serve my, food, my friends and family, so I cook. And uh, cooking is like a meditation to me. And, and so I do a variety of cooking, but I like to braise things. I have a cast iron um, uh, Dutch oven thing that I do a little bit of braising in. I have a Kamado grill that I do a little grilling in. I Sometimes I smoke things and sometimes I grill them. Uh, my wife is a, vet, a pescatarian, so I end up eating a lot of kale and, uh, and squash and other things like that. And I think I'm a little healthier because of that. And, uh, and then my wife and I might watch a little show together. We have a few different shows that we like to watch together. And, uh, and then I do a little bit of reading. I fall asleep by about 10 o'clock. I, I, yeah, I mean, tremendous, tremendous. Uh, well, we're at that point now. It's so sad, Scott. I'm, I really don't want to end the podcast. 
Yeah, you, you've been geeking out on this podcast, man. Yeah, yeah. But we're at that point now in the podcast where I'm going to put you on the spot, John, and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book. You've given so many tips that I'm actually going to write a book from it. But another tip of the week that will improve the art of passive income listeners' lives. What, what yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Mark and Scott, I think that sitting is the new smoking and that uh, we need to move and we need to get outside to be healthy. And that uh, whenever you can do it, uh, take your phone calls on the road with you. Do what I call walk and talks. If you have meetings with other human beings, don't do it behind a desk or a conference table. Meet them for a walk. The best way to connect with somebody is to actually get outside and be with them. And so my tip for you is to start doing walk and talks with your team members, with people that you're meeting for business purposes and uh, or just on the phone or even just yourself. I think if you walk for an hour every day, eat half of the food that you have in front of you at every meal, and ideally give the other half to somebody uh, less fortunate than you, that you will be a happier human being. It, it's, it, it's, so, uh, it's so refreshing, John. I love it. I love it. So do you like my treadmill desk? I do. I do. I, you know, the fact that you're sitting there doing a, a walk uh, on your treadmill while you're talking to me is a testimony that you and I read uh, from the same hymn book, uh, you, Scott, and myself, Mark. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to ask you, if, if, you had a, if you're on a desert island and you go have one book, business book, what would you bring? Encyclopedia Britannica. I <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you know, as a kid, like I said, I, I, I'm, I was a bit of a nerd and uh, I lived a half a block from a library and I just found that reading was such a great way to, uh, to get knowledge and that today <clears throat> we have all these devices, right? And we can look things up, but ultimately you can't look things up that fast. And so if you actually do read on a daily basis and consume knowledge by understanding history, you can predict the future and by having knowledge at your fingertips, which is essentially at your, right here, you could really achieve amazing things. Now, I think that I wouldn't be in the place I am today if I didn't voraciously read. And one of the things I used to take to bed when I was a kid was the encyclopedia. I read every single letter and I went back and read them again. And because knowledge is power. I, I was the same way as a kid, actually. Yeah. But I didn't start gold mine. <laughs> yeah, but you're out I'm a, there. I'm a little slow, John. You're you're out there teaching and preaching, Mark and Scott. And I think that by doing so, you can't help but help other people grow. And by doing that, you will grow yourself. Oh, a absolutely. And you know, you look, comparison is a thief of happiness, right? Yeah. I'm very happy. And uh, you know, I, I always whenever I think about, well, like my buddy Ori, he sold his company for three hundred sixty million dollars. If there's like a little part of me that's like, oh, maybe I should be building a, a big company to, to exit one day. But he's no happier. Right? Have Have you ever seen uh, Christmas Carol? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know that guy Marley's ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you see him when he walks in the room with all this change wrapped around his body? Mm -hmm. That's what many wealthy people feel like. That, that they're essentially all their, their things they've accumulated are a burden. And that's why uh, Siddhartha is a really great book for anyone to read. Because what it talks about is that you can't buy your way to happiness. And by releasing it and, uh, and getting in touch with yourself, that you will be more capable of getting in touch with other people. And like we started with, I think that's why we're here. And so uh, do not seek wealth for happiness. Um, the journey you should be on is to better understand yourself and to love yourself and to uh, be more in touch with yourself so that you can love and be in touch with others. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm so glad we're transcribing this, Scott Todd. <laughs> Great. And uh, Siddhartha is one of my favorite books. I, I, I'm just wondering, like, are, are you guys related? Like, you know, you two might be related. Could be. 
Yeah. We'll have to, we'll have to go and uh, what is it? You need like 23 and me or whatever the thing is called where you swab and take the DNA test. You know, you want to hear something weird? So I've done that test literally six times. And every time it comes back with, we can't figure it out. Really? Yeah, they give me a new kit. I think I'm an alien. Wow. Do, 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 do. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, Scott, what, what's your tip of the week? You, so you, you stumped. I've never, that's interesting. It's, it's like stump 23 and me. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if this might be it, but the tumor that I had was in my head. And in order to kill it, they lit me up with radiation for seven weeks every day. And have you ever burned a leaf with a magnifying glass? Yeah. Okay. So you could focus energy on a spot. And if you don't focus on that spot, it doesn't burn. They focused a radiation beam exactly in the center of my head where the tumor was, but did it in the exact same pathways, 360 degrees, because I my head was clamped to a table. And so they're able to create a makeup, a workup of pointing that beam through my vital salivary glands and taste buds and, and nerves and everything. So I bypassed all that. So I still have all that because I'm a wine connoisseur and I would hate to have to drink saline every time I eat a sandwich, but maybe they zapped all my cells. So I have no, I have no cells for them to find, but I don't know if that's really true. Do you have fingerprints? Um, okay. Okay. That's a different conversation. <laughs> I do. Okay, Mark, uh, this, this tip uh, is for John. Okay, I, could, I couldn't resist because he said, uh, you know, sitting in there smoking. You've said that many times, Mark. I'm using this tip right now, and it's the uh, Smart Desk. And it's the, here, I'm going to even give you the link. It's, the, it's by autonomous.ai. It's the Smart Desk. And it, it's got all the fancy buttons, rises up and down. But Mark, if you, when you look at this, check it out in the lower right-hand corner, they've got the AI box, which the AI box is your AI personal assistant and smart home control that's built onto the desk. So think of like our friend Alexa. Okay. I oh my it. gosh, I'm buying this right now. And then what it does is it watches your calendar and it says, hey, Mark, you have a meeting at this time. Uh, would you like for me to raise your desk? And you're like, yes. And so it raises the desk or, Hey, Mark, I see you've been sitting all day. Would you like for me to raise your desk? Yes. Uh, I love that. What's it called? It's a ton. And I actually put it in the chat for you, but it's by autonomous.ai and it's the smart desk too. Yeah. But there's a business edition. There's a home edition. Yeah. But the problem is the, the AI box is sold out. I know. That's how popular it is. I'm still waiting oh, for mine. Oh, this is really inexpensive for what it is. Yeah. My, I love my desk. I've got the, uh, I've got the, uh, I guess I've got the home. No, I've got the business edition. Uh, so I've got the business edition and I've got the bamboo desktop and I've got the uh, ergonomic one. So it's cut out in the center there with the, the white platform. I love it. I love this desk. Cool. I'm going to have to check that, uh, okay. check, check that out. It's very affordable too. And they did a great job of, uh, shipping. There was a slight flaw. I, I tweeted over to them and you know what? They fixed it like that. It's yeah. It's a great tip. Uh, yeah. great tip. Nice. But no one's got a better tip than me. So sorry guys. Go figure. My tip of the week is learn more about how you can really take your relationships to the next level and scale them at nimble.com nimble.com and uh john ferrara what, what a mentor you've been uh today I, I can't really thank you enough and uh i know if, if we had to get a room of the art of passive income listeners they would be expressing their gratitude as well for sharing all your wisdom all your knowledge uh just like a fraction of it probably and uh uh, is being so generous with us. And, uh, you know, thank you so much. I really, you bet. You bet. I, I, like I said, we're, we're here to help other people grow and I, any opportunity I can to get up on my soapbox and help people with their passion plan and purpose in life is a, is a good day for me. So you helped me today, Mark and Scott and your community. So thank you all. Our pleasure. So John, do we, did, do we, is there a question we should have asked you that we didn't ask you? Nah, I think we're good. Are we good? All right. Yeah. Scott, are we good? 
I think we're good. All right. I want to thank all the listeners and just remind them, look, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a John Ferrara from nibble.com is if you do three things. They're really easy. They take about two minutes, but they make a huge difference uh, for Scott and I is just subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. If you send us a screenshot of the review to support at thelandgeek.com, we're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Uh, also, this podcast, again, is going to be sponsored by hostingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Let freedom ring. Thanks, everybody. John's like, oh, these guys are geeky. <laughs> <laughs>